So we started off identifying what the different forces were acting on this particular crate because we have the information that it's moving at constant velocity therefore it is not accelerating and that means that the net force acting on this object is going to be equal to zero. So we identify all the forces and we sum all those up and graphically it looks like this. Very nice picture. However, um, when we go to try to calculate some values we're going to need to do this a bit more mathematically and the best way that we uh, one of the many ways that we can do that is by um, writing this out into component form, right? So this is a vector quantity which has information. It says that the net force in the x direction plus uh, I, I hat, sorry, the magnitude of the net force in the x direction in the I hat plus the magnitude of the net force in the y direction J hat is going to be equal to zero. And similarly, if a, a K hat as well, if we had a third dimension. Um, and so we can write down each of these uh, values separately so that everything on the left is going to equal everything on the right. So that the net force in the x direction is going to be equal to zero also. And the net force, like, independently. So not only does the sum of the forces, but the sum of the forces in the x and y directions um, also somehow. And we can kind of see that graphically, that the x component of the force on the crate by the ramp has to account for the this external force that's pushing it up and the uh, vertical component of the force on the crate by the ramp has to account for this uh, the force on the crate by the earth. Um, so we can kind of write those down independently and see how what that's going to look like. Um, so for a lot of our ramp problems we choose a coordinate axis that is uh, kind of aligned with the actual um, with the actual angle of the ramp so that the uh, horizontal direction, so that the x direction is horizontal to the plane and the vertical direction is perpendicular to that. Um, for this particular problem, I think because we have two vectors that are actually uh, in a horizontal and vertical direction and only one vector that kind of splits between the two, that we're going to maintain our uh, standard hor vertical and horizontal axes. So I'm going to draw an axis over here uh, that kind of helps as a marker to help me remember which direction is which. So I'm going to call positive x to the right. We're going to call positive y to the left. Or positive y vertically upward on the paper. Okay. So when we go to write these things down, we want to make sure we take account for each of the things. We take the net force in the x direction. Um, that means we're taking um, the net force of, that's F. So that's our capital F. Uh, and that's moving to the right, so we'll leave that as a positive sign here in front. Um, then we're adding to that the x component of the crate on the ramp. So that's minus the force of the crate on the ramp in the x direction. Okay, and then we are, I should, these are actually now magnitudes because I'm adding, if I if I could write this down, I could write this down with the vector quantities, but when I put the negative signs out front, that means I'm now considering just the magnitudes of those vectors. That's going to be equal to zero. And similarly, the net force uh, in the y direction, we take all of our y vectors here, we'll take the force on the crate by the earth, um, and that's vector quantity. If we want to consider the magnitude of it, we'll bring our negative sign out in front of it because it is vertically downward, and we chose positive y to be up. So this being vertically downward, we'll have a negative sign, um, and then we're going to add to that the y component of the force on the crate by the ramp. All right, that's this quantity right here. And that must also equal to zero. Okay? Um, now we want to have information about how these quantities relate, um, and this is always a, a potential sp uh, spot for um, a spot for potential error that we want to make sure that we don't um, screw it, it up that the okay hold on a second oh my gosh what I, I, I blanked. It's early in the morning. Give me one moment, all right? I'll, I'll be right back and double check this. Well, actually, I, I think I can work through it, right? Let's, let's talk it through. We have, we have our angle of our ramp, and what we want to know is we want to see how that's similar. We want to be able to translate this vector appropriately into x, y coordinates. Um, and since this is basically in line with that, 
we have this angle is going to be equal to this angle and um, kind of using some geometry this is we call these angles in geometry um, which doesn't mean it's equal to that it means that it's something a little bit different um, so that if that's that angle then this is 90 minus that angle which means this angle is really the same angle as the one that's up here um, and so the angle of the ramp, this is often a part that's really confusing, it's always been very confusing to me exactly how to translate these correctly. So if we know that this is the force on the crate by the ramp, then the vertical component is actually the force on the crate by the ramp times the cosine of theta, and the horizontal is the force on the crate times the sine of theta. Um, so there's actually a better explanation of that in a different video uh, that you can go back and link, and maybe I'll try to add a link into this one in a, a notation. Um, so we can plug in those quantities. We have the force, which we were trying to find. Uh, we subtract the magnitude of the force on the crate by the ramp in the x direction, which we just kind of derived out as being the force on the crate by the ramp times cosine of theta. And that's going to be equal to zero. And then we also know that we have um, minus the force on the crate by the earth which is going to be mass, the mass of the crate, times the gravitational acceleration, plus the force on the crate by the ramp in the y direction, which is FCR times, uh, I already wrote it down wrong, shoot, this is supposed to be the cosine of theta, and this is supposed to be the sine of theta, I apologize. There we go, Let me go back and fix that a little bit. Um, well, now the question is asking us for two quantities. Um, we know what theta is. We don't know what F is. Uh, we don't know what FCR is. Uh, we know what mass is. We know what gravity is. And here's theta again. Here's FCR. So what we have here is two equations. Here's equation one. Here's equation two. And we have two unknown quantities. It's FCR and F. And it turns out that the question itself is asking us for those same two quantities. So we solve, we have two equations and two unknowns, we'll just solve for them. Um, there's lots of ways to potentially uh, do that. Um, I think the easiest one is um, we can simply solve for one of these uh, quantities. We take something like um, FCR in this equation, and we're going to subtract F, so we'll take minus F and then divide by the negative sine. So we had negative CR, we're going to divide by sine theta. Um, and then we're going to divide by the negative sine. So we know that FCR is equal to F divided by sine theta. Um, and then we can take that quantity and plug it into here and say minus mg, depends on me, um, equals F divided by sine theta times cosine theta equal to zero. And then we solve for all of those quantities, right? We add mg to the other side, we take f, um, and that's going to equal mg. We add mg to this side, and then we multiply by sine by both sides, and divide by cosine. And if that kind of goes really quick, you ask someone, ask me, or ask someone else exactly how you do those steps, but I'm, I kind of go through uh, algebra rather quickly, so I'm expecting you know how to move those to the other side. And now we have this nice relationship. So if you ever wanted to know what the equation was for figuring out the magnitude of the force, an external force that acts in a perfectly horizontal direction on a ramp, this is the equation, it turns out, right? And it's not going to be found in any book because you don't need this equation. There's too many, too many possible contexts to come up with an equation for every single uh, possible situation. But we don't need it, because the cool thing is that we can simply start with a simple expression here of forces. And then we sum the forces, we split them up into components, and then we start adding up those different pieces, and we get this relationship. We can do the same thing, right? We know what mass is, we know what gravity is, and we know what our thetas are. So we, now we just plug in our numbers. Um, and I'm not going to do that step, because you're, you, you guys know how to do that, right? I mean, it's a plugging in numbers uh, problem at that point. Um, Similarly, once we have that information, we can go back to either one of our two equations that we derived here um, and solve for the force on the crate by the ramp. All right? I hope that was helpful.